Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Great Bedwin in East Wiltshire. It's located about 14 miles southeast of Swindon and six miles southeast of Marlborough. And we're going to be walking a roughly five and a half mile circular route from the village along a towpath beside a canal to the village of Wilton and back through some enchanting woodland. And we'll have an exploration around Great Bedouin at the end. But there's lots to see, including a working windmill, a Georgian pumping station and a fair few interesting things along the way. Now I'm filming in the middle of October. It's a glorious sunny day, a little bit chilly, about five or six degrees. So Logan's got his fleece on at the moment. Hopefully it'll warm up later on, but should be perfect conditions for walking. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a free car park at the River and Waterways Trust car park, which is by the bridge on the canal, just as you come into the village. And basically the first part of the walk is following along the side of the canal. Let's kick on. Well, I tell you, it's one of those really crisp autumnal mornings. Okay, so, so we're gonna go alongside the Kennet and Avon Canal. Let me tell you a little bit about its history. It's basically a waterway that runs from Bristol to Reading and it's about 87 miles long made up of two navigable lengths of river linked by a canal. Uh, the Bristol to Bath bit follows the River Avon and then a canal links it to the River Kennet at Newbury. I think there's something like 105 locks. The canal section was built between 1794 and 1810 and there was a, a wharf here at Great Bedouin. It started to fall into disuse with the opening of the Great Western Railway, which goes along the northern side of the canal here in the mid 19th century. Indeed, the Great Western Railway bought the canal. I think the canal fully closed down in the 1950s, if not before, and it was restored in stages during the late 20th century and reopened in 1990. Well, just as we're wandering along the canal, there's plenty of these terrific uh, canal boats to, uh, to look at. And just on the northern side of the canal, or certainly looking at the map, looks as though there's a river called the, the River Dun, or the Bedouin Brook, which I, I believe is a, a tributary of the River Kennet. And it, it, well, it seems to flow on the other side of the, the canal, but east of the railway, but west of the canal you see what I mean. So it's, uh, its source can't be far from here I reckon. Well this is our first lock along the canal. We can actually see it being used in action as it were. So uh, the first of the gates has just been opened. Hopefully you can see this because the, the sun's just behind a whole load of um, uh, great big hedge. It all looks rather complicated. I wonder how many times this gets done during the course of a journey. There's a lovely boat full of plants on top. All right, now, is there enough room to get through? I'll find out in a minute. A few moments later. I imagine it takes a fair bit of skill to manoeuvre. And there we go. Smoothly done. Isn't that terrific? Excellently done, sir. I expect you've done this a few times in the past. <laughs> Thousands, yeah. And there, the gate being closed again. Well, now we've seen the, the lock in action. 
just have a quick look on the other side. It just shows you how how deep it is. Goodness me. And this is to say the first bridge. Now we will be crossing this bridge right at the end of the walk, but let's have a little look at something on the other side before we go any further. Ah oh, yes, there's the, the river that I was talking about earlier. So we've got the canal on the right there. And then this is the railway line here on the left. And there's Great Bedouin Church. And we'll have a look at that, as I say, towards the end of the, the video. But in front of me here, uh, in the shadows, you can see the railway line. It looks like there's three tracks, but in fact, one of them is a siding. Now this section of the railway opened in 1862 and it was part of the Berkshire and Hampshire extension that linked Hungerford with Devizes. But from 1906 it's been part of the Reading to Taunton line and there is a railway station at Great Bedouin. And uh, well, where I am now is actually a, a terminus for local trains. So this third little bit of track, all the siding on the left, which is actually to the west of the station, is where trains can cross over and then return eastwards. A lovely display of flowers on the side of the boat. They're looking quite stunning in the morning sunshine. Our second bridge along the route. Now I'm going to do a little detour over onto the other side. See if I can find a World War II pillbox. Actually, just as we go over the bridge, of course, you get a great view of the canal. And you can see this is the the towpath that we've been following on the right there. A couple of quite gorgeous swans swimming uh, peacefully in the distance there. Well, <laughs> now you're going to have to take my word for this, but behind all that ivy is actually a World War II pillbox. Uh, so it's on the sort of northern side, I think it's called Crofton Road, just outside of Great Bedouin. And apparently it's an FW3 stroke 22 pillbox. It was part of the GHQ stop line and well, it's high up on the bank. So I'm guessing it must have um, defended not only the road, but if I just slowly turn around, the canal is about a hundred yards or so over to my right. Well, this is probably the most unusual boat that we've seen in terms of shape so far along the, the route. It's certainly a bit different, isn't it? Boat number three, it's called. Wow, a little pit stop just to take in the view along here. It's so peaceful. Lots of uh, ducks on the other side. I love the way the the trees grow and sort of dangle over the edge of the water. And it's such a, a haven for wildlife along here, of course. Well, looks like they're doing some <laughs> tree cutting over the other side there. Maybe a tree's fallen over and I need to uh, obviously conserve the um, the canal. It looks a bit hazardous on that little pontoon, mind you. <laughs> Another bridge over the canal. Uh, these must be remnants of the Second World War as well. Perhaps anti-tank cylinders that would have been put in place to block the bridge. And uh, just on the other side, we get a good view of the next lock and again that gives you an idea as to how deep it is 
morning. <laughs> now that's the way to travel. <laughs> I was going to say, I suppose you've got to get out every time you come to a lock. Oh. Watch the experts in action here. <laughs> oh, rather athletic. Yeah, look, they must pop back in on the other side of the bridge. Oh well, good way to keep fit. I was speaking to a few of them. Apparently there's some sort of training event going on. Now one thing you'll have noticed so far is that Logan has shown no inclination for having a dog dip. Today is definitely not dog dip weather. I mean it's glorious sunshine but so the temperature of the water a little nippy. Now that uh, tower on the other side of the bank and the building next to it just behind those trees is the Crofton pumping station built between 1807 and 1809 to supply water to the highest point, I think, in the Kennet and Avon Canal. Uh, and it was ready for the completion of the canal, obviously, in 1810. Now, the original plans for the canal involved a two and a half mile tunnel, but that was considered too expensive. So they went for a much shorter tunnel. It's called the, the Bruce Tunnel to the west of here at Burbage. It's only about 500 yards long, but with a higher summit. However, the summit was some 40 foot higher than the reliable natural source of water. So a pumping station was needed here to keep the water level in the canal topped up. The Kennet and Avon Canal Trust bought the station in 1968 and it was restored in 1971. If you want to know how it all works, well, <laughs> feel free to check out their website. And I was reading that, well, to pump the water, there were two historic Cornish beam engines. In fact, one dates from 1812. And they're both fed by a hand-stoked coal-fired Lancashire boiler, so it's steam-powered. And I believe it's uh, one of the oldest working beam engines in the world that's still in its original engine house and also capable of doing the job for which it was originally intended. The brick chimney you can see there was built in 1856. But the station for the canal today uses an electric pump when the steam driven pumps aren't actually in use. Well now that we've reached the pumping station this is the point where we temporarily say goodbye to the canal and start heading southwards towards the little village of Wilton. We will see the canal obviously right at the end of the walk because that's where our cars park. So obviously there's the, the pumping station and you can see the, the canal that carries on in front of it. But just to the side in front of me here there's another little expanse of water called Wilton water known locally as the wide waters and it was created in 1836 by damming a small valley and it's fed by natural springs and well i believe it helps with the, the constant supply of water to the canal wow what a beautiful setting this uh, stretch of wilton water oh look at the, the heron flying across the water there and the reflections of the sun on the water really uh, make it quite magical. And of course there's this lovely footpath that goes alongside the lake.
Now somewhere along this route there was an old tramway but I don't think there's any evidence of it now so I'm just going to vaguely say it was around about here. It doesn't actually show on a 1900 map but does show on a 1958 map as a disused tramway and it was only operational between 1902 and 1910 and it was a two mile tramway linking the brickworks to the east with the old Grafton and Burbage railway station that was on the Midland and Southwestern Junction railway to the west. That line closed in the 1960s and the brickworks closed in the 1930s. Ah, sorry folks, another little pit stop just to take in the view. This is still part of Wilton Water. It sort of bends around a bit. We've now come into the lovely little village of Wilton and oh, it's a beautiful little village full of delightful cottages and houses in terrific condition and there's also a pub which you can see behind me and it's the Swan Inn opened in 1724 and well up until around the late 19th century it was actually located on the northern side of this road as it shows on a 1900 map but at some stage it must have switched over to the south side, presumably uh, in the early 20th century. And it's open, so we ought to pop in there purely for research purposes for the video. Well, so we simply had to, to stop for a visit for a pint of gold. And as it's quite a chilly day, we thought we'd check out some of their soup and it smells delicious and don't worry, I've got some treats for Logan. Well, I feel somewhat fortified by that pint and that delicious soup. Let's kick on with the walk. So we're now going to head, I suppose, eastwards out of the village. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> I always think these are extraordinary animals. They probably think I'm extraordinary. They're lovely to see though, aren't they? Okay, well, just as we're coming out of Wilton Village, there's this road to my right. Um, now the road straight ahead is where we're going to continue towards a, a windmill. But just over to my left, there's a, a track. Basically, this is where a Roman road crosses. Uh, I think it was the Winchester to Sirencester Roman Road, certainly looking at an old map. It's, uh, it certainly shows. Aha, there's our next destination, Wilton Windmill. So we've got a tiny little bit of road work to do, but it's not too busy. Well, this is probably the best spot to look at the windmill because on the other side, I'll be pointing directly to the sun. Of course, this time of year, the sun's quite low in the sky. So Wilton Windmill, built in 1821 after the canal was built. Of course, the canal was constructed over and through the site of local water mills and the pumps uh, providing water for the canal also lowered the river levels. So the remaining water mills uh, couldn't operate anymore. So a windmill was built up here on the ridge and it operated for about a hundred years. It was restored in 1976 and uh, it's owned by Wiltshire Council and run by the Wilton Windmill Society. I believe it still produces flour today. Now this is a, an important part of the route. Uh, so just a little bit further along from the windmill, a little T-junction here. And we now start heading left uh, in a sort of northerly direction that'll take us back to the, to the canal Actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at the view here. This really is your typical Wiltshire rolling uh, landscape. Looks like there's a chap metal detecting right out in the middle of the field there. Not 100% sure, but oh, I just love these, say, crisp, fresh autumnal days when not a cloud in the sky. Ah, very important finger post here. Um, we don't want to go straight 
onto the Wilton Braille Byway. We want to go right on the Great Bedouin Bridleway. Well, you never know what you're going to come across on some of these woodland walks. We've got a couple of carvings here, the lovely owl on the left and then a rather miserable looking chap on the right. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, there is a, a little um, sign at the bottom, what does that say? Uh, in celebration of Elizabeth II, the longest living monarch. Now, if I've got my bearings right, just over in that little clearing, just before the trees that you can see in the distance there, um, there was a large Roman courtyard villa that was discovered around about 1780, and it was excavated in 1853 and 1937, and apparently there are some pits and mounds over there, although I can't see any to the naked eye. And then just to the right, um, just behind that little bank there, there was once a, a cottage called Braille Cottage, but there's no sign of that now. I tell you, this is a quite beautiful bit of woodland along here. But it's really noticeable. So I'm filming mid-October and well, there's no sign yet of any of the leaves turning, uh, you know, gold or yellow or brown yet. All very green still. I think we're very much in for a late autumn this year. Well, we've made it back to Great Bedouin, but um, before we finish the video, I promised you at the beginning that we'd have a look around the village. So uh, we'll start off with a quick look at the church, which is just behind me here. And it's the Church of St Mary's. Now, originally there was a wooden Saxon church here in 905 AD, but the present church dates to 1092 with additions in the 13th and 14th centuries. It was heavily restored between 1853 and 1855. And uh, there's a, a four bay nave with aisles, transepts and a central tower, which was added in the 14th century, a chancel, which was rebuilt in the 13th century, and a south vestry. I think it's got six bells. Well, we'll have a quick peep inside. So just on the left here, Quite a large and impressive font. And some terrific arches along the side of the nave, or just above the main entrance, there's the first of many quite splendid stained glass windows in the church. And just moving on to the pulpit, where the beautiful carvings on the side. And there's the magnificent organ. But look, just behind it, there's a terrific stained glass window, of course, getting the late afternoon sunshine. And this is the chancel, the altar. And again, another magnificent stained glass window above the altar. Now, just in the chancel, right by the altar, is this effigy. And I think this is an effigy of um, Sir John Seymour, who died in 1536. And he was the father of Jane Seymour, third wife of Henry VIII. There are certainly some quite gorgeous houses and cottages in the village. As far as the village history was concerned, well, there was a very big fire in 1716. so. Many of the older properties date from the, the mid 18th century. Now in the early 18th century, there were around 14 inns or ale houses in the village, six in Church Street alone, but it was down to just three by 1790. And the building in front of me called the Art House, that used to be the Cross Keys pub, established in 1763. 
and it was closed, well, only a few years ago. And the building here, opposite the old bakery in Church Street, uh, called the Old White Hart, was indeed the White Hart Pub, closed in 1867. And finally, the Three Tons, which I'm pleased to say is open, established in 1784. And uh, as it is open, well, we ought to just quickly pop in there, again, for research purposes for the video. Well, here we are at the Three Tons. What a perfect way to end the walk in glorious sunshine and a pint of horizon. Yep, thumbs up from me. And how could I forget? It must be Chris time. Walkers, which you quite like, I think. <laughs> well, folks, we're back at the canal and at the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out my Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today and the weather has once again been glorious. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.